So far, we've been working with one video track, one primary video track in LumaFusion. But LumaFusion supports up to six video and audio tracks. So let's take a look at how those additional tracks connect or don't connect to the track underneath. I'll start with this wide shot here of the Taj Mahal. Let's say that I want to insert a close-up shot, like this one here of one of the turrets, and I want to have that as part of this main shot here. But I don't want to actually delete part of this shot. I'm not trying to edit anything out. Maybe I want to maintain the audio that's in here, for example. So I'll take this additional shot and I'll drop it on a track above it. Now I've got the original audio intact, and as I go through, the camera will switch from one shot to the other and back to the primary. And notice how there is a small line denoting a connection between these two shots. Now, if I take this clip here and I move it, that attached shot moves with it. No matter where I move this on the timeline, the shot on top stays with the shot on the bottom. This also applies to deleting the clip. If I select this primary clip and hit the delete button, both the primary and the clip on top of it will get deleted. I'll undo that. So where would you want to do this? Well, cutting away to a secondary shot, a B-roll shot, is a great example of that, as we just saw here. It could also be for something like a title. Let's say that you built a title card saying Taj Mahal, and you wanted to have it sitting on top of that shot. As you move that clip around, you want to make sure that that title stays with it. The same goes for sound effects. You may apply a sound effect to a shot, and you want to make sure that sound effect stays with it. Let's have a look. I'll open up my search dialog and switch this into All mode. And in here, I'm going to search for birds. I know that I've got a sound effect of birds in here. There it is, birds chirping. I've already marked a small piece of that, so I'll go ahead and take that shot and drop it onto the timeline. Just like with the video clip above it, you can see that that audio shot now has a small line indicating that it is connected. And of course, if I move this shot around, both the B-roll and the audio effect clip go with it. And as you would expect, if I hit delete, it's going to delete all of them. I'll undo that. I explained why you might want to have a secondary clip connected to the primary clip, but what if you don't want it connected? Well, there may be situations where you don't want to have the video clips on secondary tracks connected to the ones on the primary tracks. For example, an opening title sequence, or maybe a motion graphic bug that's going to sit over the entire project. Or for music, you may want to have background music that is locked in place and doesn't move around with the video. So let me show you how to unlink tracks from the primary track. Going back to this first one, the close-up of the Taj Mahal, with that selected, if I tap this link icon here, it'll break the link. Notice how the line connecting the two clips disappears. Now, if I move this bottom clip around, you'll see that that top clip doesn't move with it. In fact, the top clip always stays exactly where it is, to the point where even if I delete clips underneath, you could actually end up with a gap between the two clips. That's because the clips on the secondary tracks can be completely independent from everything on the primary track. Let me undo that to get some footage back on the timeline. And then let's say that I changed my mind and I want to reconnect that B-roll clip to the primary one. Just position the clip where you want it, and then with that clip selected, tap the link icon. And you can see that that line has returned, denoting that they're connected. If I want to disconnect everything from this clip, simply select the clip and then tap the link button to break everything connected to it at once. Finally, you can also set an entire track to be disconnected from the track beneath it. To do that, open the track headers and then tap on this link icon here. That will force every clip on the timeline above the primary line to be disconnected. Let's go ahead and add a few clips back into the timeline. I'll go ahead and add a few additional clips onto this project. And notice how none of them are connected. If I want to connect any single clip, when I select it and tap the connect button, it's actually not going to let me. It tells me that track linking is turned off. So if I want to connect that clip, I'm going to have to first re-enable track linking. You may have noticed when I re-enabled that, that all clips automatically relinked. So this is actually a little shortcut. Let's just say that I've disabled a couple of clips on this track, and I decide at some point that I want all of them to be reconnected. I can go over here and temporarily disable and then re-enable clip linking, and all the clips will automatically reconnect. In most editing situations, you would probably dedicate an entire track to graphics that don't move. So you'd have all of those graphics on one or two tracks, leaving the other tracks free for connected media.